Camille Eaton Romick. I make art quilts as well as fiber art and I'm a cataloging librarian. I grew up with a mother who sewed and there was beautiful fabric around our house all the time. Um, I didn't really start sewing heavily until I was in college, and, but I started making quilts in the early 1990s. My grandmother, who lived in Texas, also sewed and she made beautiful quilts. I have one at home. And um, so my first major art quilt was included her. It's um, the story of the Dust Bowl where my father grew up in the panhandle of Texas. And it also was a major piece for me because I could finally machine quilt. Uh, up until this point, I had been hand quilting, which means if you machine quilt, you can get things done faster. This piece is called Lichen Like. It's made from um, monoprinted fabric circles, monoprinted yo-yos, and lots of hand stitching. There's a little bit of machine quilting in there. Um, there's commercial fabric, hand dyed fabric as well. And this is a piece that is in the show and um, it reminded me of lichens on the tree trunks. After my dust bowl piece, I moved into more abstract patchwork. And this one is called Zero One, and it deals with um, the universality of a binary language, zero and one. I used fabrics that had dashes and dots, the symbols for zero and one. So during the COVID stay-at-home order, I started a series of six by six inch pieces, and this is one of them. I took some monoprinted fabric I had made, and some of them are one piece, but some of them are two pieces, as this one is, and embroidered them with designs. They um they talk they talked to me because the the design in here is from a found object um, that I, I've located on the, the road during one of my walks. And my pieces in this show focus on wandering. So that really said that to me. Um, this is how I would have done it. I would sew the, the, um, the monoprinted fabric to some batting. And I like to also use uh, what they call yo-yos. And there's yo-yos in this piece over here. Um, the yo-yos are just little circles of fabric that you sew around the edge and then scrunch them up. And they make wonderful texture. And this one I think will be something to do with um, sort of the funguses you find on tree stumps. We have a lot of those in um, my village of Huff's Church. So this particular show at Clayon, Maine came out of the brain, was the brainchild of Sandy Britlin, who was part of a community art project that I did at the Kutztown Community Library in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. It was called Community Threads. And I used the library as a resource as well as um, sort of a, a meeting place because it's a, it's a third place. It's a place that is neutral in our communities. I envisioned a project involving slow stitch, which is a very meditative process of hand stitching that incorporated an archetype for the community as a whole. And that archetype was the DNA double helix. We hand pieced 380 blocks, quilted it, and then appliqued three large double helix designs 
uh, all out of donated fabric, which also came from the community. And that fabric represented the individual's history and their DNA contribution to the double helix. We finished it in, we started in January 2018 and we finished in August 2019 and it hangs at the library today. During this process, Sandy envisioned something more um, artistic in more traditional handwork by women, and that's where this show came out of. One of my favorite books is a reference book called The Book of Symbols, and I use this when I'm searching for an archetype for pieces like my Community Threads uh, project. Um, I've used it for a number of um, projects over the years, and basically it gives you um, an object, in this case it's a scorpion, and it relates it to historical art. It may be very recent art, but it, historically it relates it to art. And I've found so many wonderful stories and ways of utilizing this book. It was very important during Community Threads as I developed the grant for that project and um, the symbolism for the community. Thank you.